really not really cameras. They're optical sensors. Hey, um, so we tend to think of uh, cameras as producing images. They're actually a capturing images, that are capturing data, uh, basically points of space that allow us to give us a data set. Um, this essentially behaves as a, as a thumbprint. If somebody turns on that, you turn on your light, hmm? turn on the light on your camera. Oh. Okay, give me one second. Uh, you're making it complicated. Here you go. All right, go ahead. It took now, too long. Put that real close to your eye, like this. Yeah, and now look at this. Turn and move your wrist. Uh, see it? Yeah, I see. Yeah. So it's retroreflective markers. Uh, so you, what's happening is he has a, more or less a straight line from the light to the to the glass bead in the back, and he's the, the, those they just flashed every time the light went on them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but the point being that. IR light is being blasted out of these cameras at about 60, 60 hertz or 120. What are we doing up there, 60? Uh, 48. 48. Uh, 48 times a second, we're, we're opening and closing the shutter, and, and it's measuring time of flight. What that all that does is it tells you where this is in space. They're like a little gang of, of, of uh, characters who agree or disagree on the information. If they all agree, grand. If somebody disagrees with them and they don't agree with the gang, they get tossed out. It's bad information. So that definitively says that is, oh, that is that, that, that tiara. I can see where it is. But for us, this particular arrangement, this thumbprint, is a camera. Well, same thing with the, with, with the human, but with, with all our performances. System we're using is called an inverse biokinematic solve. Right? So that's got to be on the exam. Right? So inverse being inside out, bio, <laughs> bio being biological, and then kinematic being skeletal. Right? So we're basically working from the inside out. We're, ca we're capturing the outside, but we're actually taking it, turning it into skeletal data. Once you have skeletal data, you can take that and transfer it to a different character. You can have a disparate scale, you can have a disparate shape, but if you know the locomotion of the bones are correct, well, now you have it, right? So that's the motion capture portion of it. The performance capture portion of it, which is what we call it, for the reason that we're also capturing the face. That there is our, our latest generation of a head rig, Oh, that one over there. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll see stereo cameras, right? Two, two little cameras. The, uh, the old version of it was one. What that allows us to do is rebuild a topographical mesh that represents the, the, the surface of the face. In other words, uh, depth, depth, uh, 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 a depth mesh. So we can confirm or deny the, 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 sort of the, the credibility of the performances or the, uh, after the fact on a frame-by-frame -frame basis, right? So that's, in a weird way, a QC for us. It helps us understand whether we got it right or not. We still have to do all of the same uh, pieces. So, so facial t was probably one of the biggest leap forwards that we had on this movie. Um, we, we, we managed to uh, work with Weta starting from, like, really Gollum onwards. We, we, we had a rig, a facial rig that we manipulated that was mimicking facial, the, the physiognomy of, of, of a human face. Uh, since then, it's evolved into a neural network that, uh, that much better replicates the muscle layout where the ubiquitous is. How does that go? You all have, you have completely different shaped faces, you have the same muscle set. Right? So, but your philtrum is longer and slimmer than hers. You know what I mean? It's like, so, it, again, but uh, you, you're, the depth of your nasal labia for all the creases are here. Yours are, are real shallow and fall off. Yours are slightly it, mm -hmm. they've, uh, con concave. So, that's all to do with. Like all of the same pieces exist on every face, then you just have to describe them. So that's how we made the facial system scalable. You know, because if you're looking at, let, uh, we all have a very, very similar facial makeup, make where you actually take away everything else and just look at what's going on below all the muscles. There's, you, you know, it's, we're all fundamentally the same. All right. I digress. We're off, we're off track already. <laughs> Hi. I feel like, do you look at people differently now? Like, now? Like, no, I've yeah, been doing like, this for... Oh, okay. I, 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 I think I, I'd like to think we started this, this revolution back on, uh, on Iron Giant. I've been on the soapbox for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, just that we did this in the last time, when I said 30 years out loud, it scared the bejesus out of me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, been, it's been a roll. Um, Okay, let's see. All right, so this is Ben. Ben is our uh, is our first AD, our, 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 our first uh, assistant editor. Um, our editorial first is actually what it's called, right? Uh, it's actually, no, first assistant editor. First assistant yeah. editor, there you go. So Ben's going to play back some stuff for us. So we talked about um, the capture process here on the stage, right? We also uh, uh, captured in a tank. One of the reasons we captured in a tank is that it lends, uh, uh, it, it, 
it was, to be honest, there was no other way to do it. We had to get our actors in the water in order to experience it properly. So if you look up, these are reference cameras. These are a way to witness what's going on in, in, the, in the camera volume itself, uh, or in the, in the volume. So here, this is a good example of it. So they're both obviously breath holding. They're in an isolated volume below the water. You'll see they're blue lights, not red lights here. Like they, they, these are invisible to the human eye. Uh, they both are. But this is IR and this is UV. This is Ryan Chantney. Ryan, when we, when we started this process, uh, we had a chit chat about how best to do it. We had to go explore. So it, it, it became Ryan's job with uh, the Beck, uh, right? The, to find the, the spectrum that best passed through water. So we you found out that you know ultraviolet light travels through water, <laughs> and you know, infrared light that we used on these volumes does not. So then we had to figure out a way to make both those volumes work together. So you'll see these uh, beads up here, plastic balls, or like small ping pong balls of different you know, sizes, and that allowed us to uh, contain the ultraviolet light below the water and the infrared light above, and combine the two volumes uh, so that we could have kind of one continuous capture space, both above and below. Combining uh, the two volumes is a really important thing, right? So we, we, we didn't only have to be capturing underwater, we have to capture in water. And because, because the shocking as it is, we have to allow our actors to breathe. They had, they had to swim back up and, and take a breath. But what we found is a lot of the performance that, we, that is in the movie takes place with a portion of the water, uh, the body below the water and a portion above. The beads also serve as, yeah, I'm diving in, the, but the beads also serve as another part of it, which was uh, refraction and reflection. So if you look at water on the underside of water, it looks like glass. It looks like Ryan often describes it as mercury, uh, but, it, but it, it, it's reflective. So we have to remove that and not spook the system. Um, one of the things that, so the, they, they were one of the things that, that was one of the big challenges. Then like both those volumes exist in separate space. They have to be temporally and geographically aligned so the body can be put back together. So you can see that one volume sees the top half of the body the other volume sees the lower half. They have to be put together and, and turned back into data set that makes up one performer. All right, uh, so that's the, 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 the tank. Let's play down. Um, so you'll see these reference cameras. Ultimately, our actors, sometimes I think when actors come to this process, they feel a little inhibited or prohibited because it's different, Dan. But very, very quickly, uh, our actors, sometimes it's within the same day. They realize that if I need to shoot a close-up, I am not going to put a camera here and say, now cry, right? And now cry again, right? And there's no other actor in the scene. Instead, we're able to go, okay, well, a, two, a scene partner, emote to each other, actually get the best possible performance. And once you do it once, once you have it, I can use it in the wide shot, I can use it in the close-up. So you, if you peak emotionally, you don't need to reset and go again, put eye drops in, clean you up, and now do the close up. It's all one great take. So let's say you peaked on take four, and your scene partner was great in take three. Well, we can put them together in time. So the equivalent is, if you went to see a play on Broadway, and Hugh McGregor was great on Wednesday night, but by Friday he was hung over, right? And a scene partner, she peaked, Friday, it was the best night she ever had. She just, everything it was, was banging. Well, imagine being able to take those two, two performances and repeat them on loop when people come to the cinema, come to the theater every time. Well, that's what we're talking about. We build these moments in time, and that is a scene while. We also have to consider every element that contributes to the composition. Why a cameraman tells, the, why the director, the cameraman, the... Uh, the editors are going to tell the story the way they do through the lens. And th that, so the camera as a character, the idea that a human is there to witness it, is very constructive. It's very deliberate for us. You, we could create any CG shot. We don't. We try to stay in a vocabulary that we all understand. We've all grown up with. We've been bombarded with media from the time we were kids. You know what I mean? We've all been watching media and, not, and consuming in a very similar way. Like 10 years ago, 12 years ago, 14 years ago, <laughs> when we shot, we were shooting the first one, you didn't see a lot of mounted cameras, right? You, you, the, 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 uh, you know, sports cameras, X Games, 
all use mounted cameras now on their surfboards or their skateboards. And so they, they're all, you cut to somebody wearing a body cam. You know what I mean? That didn't exist for us. So it was such a foreign part of the film language. Now, you turn on a TV, you see it all the time. So you'll see when the kids are being pulled through the water, we've evolved our, our language to include that type of shot. And that's a willful and deliberate kind of want and willingness to include things that the next generation of kids would expect to see. Um, and like I said, like the, we, one of the examples we used earlier was David Fincher. Have you any, anybody seen Panic Room? Mm -hmm. Right. So yeah. in Panic Room, Jodie Foster's on one side of the wall, Jared Leto's on the other. The camera goes in through the plug, through the wall, and out the other side. Sure, we can do that. Why would we? It breaks reality. Fincher could do it because he had a live action actor on one side uh, uh, and, and another live action on the other side. Nobody was question, questioning the reality of it. We have nine foot tall blue people on a planet seven light years away. Mm -hmm. right? So the last thing we want to do is do stuff that you don't see every day, that you don't believe is going to be part of the visual language. Uh, so uh, can you play down uh, the, uh, uh, cut the uh, reference version of this? Yeah. So what you're going to see is the paradigm shift in this is before we ever have shots, once we have our actors' performances, we include editorial. Editorial becomes an integral part of the pipeline, which is, it's, not that it isn't, or hasn't always been, but they always had to go last. They had to wait till the shots were done before they could put the edit together. Well, for us, we are able to go, okay, where are the best performances? What do we want? When would we play it down? You'll see, it's, whilst it's, it's a little fractured, you still get a sense of what the scene could be. And you'll see this is the, these are the performances that we're talking about. And Bailey had a beautiful smile in this one. And then in this scene, uh, we have Kiri, who goes on a slightly divert path, right? One of the important things was she needed to separate. Can you show the, yeah. uh, uh, I actually just, yeah, we, we'll, we'll go to the template version. All right, so in the template version, you'll see, if you watch in the background, as all the kids swim to the right, Kiri swims to the left, right? And because and the, the scene builds where she's having a very different experience than they are. And she's, she's comfortable in the water. She's somehow just that much more attuned to her environment. But, and it leads to a question later on, where's Kiri? You know what I mean? So play it down. So you can see because of the reference, you, there is a, an opportunity for a lovely close-up. So that was, we knew Bailey was gonna look good then. And in this case, we didn't spend a lot of time on, on, on Kiri because we got to tell the story of the environment and we saved it till later. But if, let's say, for instance, we decided that the, it, narratively the importance of uh, 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 part of this story was Kiri's discovery of the environment. Well, uh, this is our, our virtual camera. So, Ben, or uh, Kiri. Oh, so. Jerry, can you wave? I'll go by on, on the back. Jerry is the one who's actually operating for me at the moment. So he's interfacing with, and uh, this is going to be part of your, D, your, your, your exam. He's interfacing with the DCCP, right? Digital Content Creation Package. Mm -hmm. Traditionally, it would have been Maya Motion Builder, moving, it, it's moving towards Unreal, those types of packages. Well, we are truly integrated with our post effects vendor, which is Weta. Um, we, we're, we're using a lot of their, their, their uh, proprietary software being that they have a, a gazebo renderer, that's our real-time renderer, and we have, they have file formats like uh, uh, Alias and, and Atlas, that, that we, uh, 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 that Atlas and Athena, excuse me. Again, so nobody ever print, print Alias, that was my fuck up, so don't, don't print that. Yeah. <laughs> but the, yeah, their file formats, um, are, are, and if I say the F word, <laughs> if, if you are in print, it's an exclamation point. That's all it is, all right? <laughs> So, um, we, we basically what we're going to do is we'll look, we'll explore the idea of, so Jerry is, Jerry is controlling the box at the moment and he's able to, he's going to constrain me 
to this character. And by, by that, in, an, in traditional film terms, um, that would have meant something like build a dolly track, put the camera on the wheels, put, somebody push them through space, making a plan for where the actor is going to walk. <coughs> right? All of that has to be planned in order to make shots. Well, for us, it's a little different. We're able to go, OK, well, I want to go along with, with, with Kiri through the world, so I want to be, I'm going to take a portion of her influence. Um, and where she moves, she's, instead of somebody pushing the dolly, she's going to push it for me. You ready? So play back. And play back. So all of these, what you're looking at is our pre-animations. You see the fish that are swimming through the foreground? Mm -hmm. we've, we've, we've taken them and placed them. Every single element of this, uh, that we, uh, uh, this environment is manipulatable. We could do more light, less light, have these fish change their position. Swim faster, swim slower. Anything that we want, we can actually get to. And cut it. So if we did we did a shot like that and play it back. Alright, so had we shot it like this where it was about Kiri exploring the world, not the boys, then we would have had a moment of trying to describe what it's like to be in here, how, how much, what, what the fish are doing. Um, and then once you get to here, you go like, okay, well, what is she interested in? And then you would cut to a close-up on the other side. So, Jerry, let's, let's uh, come off this platform. Let's go to where she is looking at the fish. Can you reset me, Jerry? Uh, you, you jumped to a bigger scale. I didn't expect it. We, I, I should have expected it because that's what you had been, been previously asked to do. All right, Jerry, can you go? Um, just go forward. Make sure. This little group of fish right here. There you go. All right. Pull focus to the fish. Okay. Let's go to one. Ready. And play back. And pull the Kiri. And cut it. Right, so exactly like a traditional movie, right? I did all of the same things. I had, had to decide on what lens I was on. You can see uh, that this, this camera can literally, if I could change, so there's the, the shot we just shot. So Ben, can you cut those two together? Uh, and, and we'll take a look at it in a moment. So you shout when you're ready. Um, and then uh, let's go live. And every single thing in here is something that we could manipulate. Let's say for instance, we didn't want to be, it to be nearly as sunny in here. So, Jerry, can you take the sun and knock it down? And we'll use essentially what, it, what is called IBL light, skylight. Oh. All right. Can you, let's take these, these little uh, coral heads here. You scale that one up? Yeah. No, no, just take the one for a moment. Scale that up. Let's say we wanted to get a stack across. Yeah, 
Keep going. Okay, stop there. Deselect it. Turn the sun back on. And go back just a couple a couple of seconds. Keep going, keep going until she swims up past it. There you go. And back. So if I wanted to create a foreground stack, we could. Got it? So the, the point is that every single thing is manipulatable. So every piece of this had to be built by the, by the lab, by the artists, assembled. But once we have it together, it has unlimited potential to tell story. You, you can just keep changing. You can, you can do what, you know, whatever you need. Uh, uh, now, obviously then, play down the sequence as it was in, in previous. Oh, sorry, jeepers. Nobody print that. In template form. Now, I'm assuming you guys are from print publications mainly. All right, so, and again, print or internet, you know, print being an old version of typing on the internet. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, the, the, but the, the, this is a template form. Right, so if this is the way to move, the, 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 for us, this is how the movie gets delivered to web. He's not giving you anywhere near the full experience. <laughs> package this all up, give it, to, give it down to where they're able to pick it up where we left off as far as the files are concerned. They transfer fairly well. Um, and then they have to turn it into something that can be presented at cinemas. So they'll have to take and flush out the, the final light and get the final animation in place. We're very lucky in the sense that we know and have lived with our vendor for a lot, very long time. So WEDA are able to provide pre-animations for us if we know it's going to affect composition. We, 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 we have generic cycles and, and stuff that we build in, in the lab and we, we, we populate most of it. Uh, effects, i.e. the water or anything else that would influence where the camera would be or what we, what, how we see the, 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 the piece of content or how we tell the story. So play down the weather layer. Yeah. And then we, we'll fit between the two. How much is predetermined or how much can you actually do, do yourself? And Nothing's predetermined. So all we have complete freedom. That's what I'm saying. That's the point of showing you this yes. is that we, we can, I can change any aspect. Now, predetermined when it, 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 all our creative process, part of our creative process, creative choices happen here. So we get it to a point where the template you saw is the thing that goes to Weta, and then Weta knows what our intention is. Okay. Weta still have to bring that to fruition. So play it down. A lot prettier there, right? Yeah. But shots the same. The ED is the same. Okay. So again, and the composition is the same, and the, the storytelling is the same. Just this is just much more detailed. So again, it's a it's a true partnership between the final vendor and, and the creative process of the front end creative process. They're both creative processes, but but the, the creation of the content. Creators, uh, the shot, the patterning, the edit, the music, all of that happens here. We're able to send it to Weta, and then they're able to work on it in a much more informed way, massively reducing the iterations uh, uh, and the amount of time and energy that's spent on the final images are spent doing the right thing, trying to get it the best it can possibly be and getting it to screen, as opposed to making corrections or making creative decisions that take you down different avenues. We do very little exploration 
on the on the B side of it, it's usually execution, execution, exploration.